and we can both rank at the bottom together. This podcast is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Spoiler warning for whatever is in the title of this episode. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that The Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Welcome to episode 16 of the Treehouse of Horror of Babylon, where we discuss danger things. I am Ryan, and with me, as always, is Daniel. Say hi, Daniel. 80s reference. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thank my, you. my initial plan was just to do that to whenever you asked me a question, but I thought that would get old, yeah. so I'm just going to... That's it. That's the only one. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, the 80s references in Stranger Things get old, apparently, based on that. But all right, we'll get into it. Thank you to our patrons, uh, Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and Logan, the Full, full Metal patron. patron, and Ben, the Fourth, Patron, patron of, of Hope, and Mia the, the Fifth, fifth the, the Rainmaker. Rain she makes it rain. Oh, and thank you to Forrest Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia or the Mall at Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can shop online at shop.forhorsemancomics.com and you can... Uh, actually, you can't say hello to Ronald the Third Grandpa's of Christmas because he's stuck in the over-under, which... The over-under was the name of the strip club I worked at. I thought it was... Uh, no, that's not a strip club. It's just a club. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, trigger warning. If you're triggered by the 80s or an absurd amount of 80s references and Easter eggs. Uh, and now we're going to get into our history with Stranger Things because Danger Things is, of course, a parody of uh, Stranger Things. Beck said, hey, that show is supposed to be really good. Turn it on. Ten seconds in. This music is too scary. Turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my experience with, teach, with Stranger Things. I watched the first season and thought it was brilliant, and then I started watching the second season, and I went, oh my god, what happened? And I still haven't been... I've tried to finish the second season, like, five times. Are there four Yeah. now? Yeah. Apparently, the fourth one's really good, but I don't know if that's just, like, people who were, like, into all of it saying that, or... Yeah, and it, even if it is, like, you have to sit through two and three to yeah. get to it. And I'm like... Uh... And it, but, and when it first came out, like, the whole, like, 80s nostalgia thing wasn't so heavy. Wasn't so overdone as it is now. Yeah, like, yeah. it didn't bleed into it yet. Yeah, and we're, I'm not hating on the 80s. I'm a child of the 80s. It is a wonderful decade, but it no one can argue that modern pop culture doesn't overdo the, the 80s a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that a lot of that can be traced back to Stranger Things. Yes. If it wasn't the first, it was the first popular one. It's the first one I can think of. Yeah. I just didn't want to say it was the first without definitively knowing. You right. always get, like, some home actually, dude. I I'm sure there's something. The vampires are pure myth, superstition. I may be able to bring you proof that the superstition of yesterday can become the scientific reality of today background the original air date of this episode was august august october 20th 2019 it's from treehouse of horror 30 season 31 episode 4 overall it is episode 666 the other two segments are heaven swipes right which is a parody of heaven can wait and when harry met slimy which is a parody of the shape of water <laughs> it was directed by 
Timothy Bailey, who has been an animator with The Simpsons since 1995 and has been directing Simpsons episodes since 2011, it was written by J. Stewart Burns, who is credited with over 400 episodes of The Simpsons, 54 episodes of Futurama, and has a writing credit on five different Spyro the Dragon games, which I just thought was really cool. Yeah, I mean, now that is cool. And that's that. Another story in the classic, infallible three-act structure. Good enough for Aristotle, good enough for The Simpsons. Mr. Sislak, I have a feeling there's going to be one more act to this story. Well, I'm not hanging around for that. Four acts. Structure and themes. So I've never, like, I've never seen Stranger Things. When we did the Dexter one, I have n- never seen Dexter either, but I was kind of able to piece together that it wasn't or at least it started like an actual parody, but then just kind of made jokes. Yeah, then it kind of like lost the script. This felt like a true parody the whole way through. Is it that... was almost a beat for beat, like here's scenes that happened mm. in the show. They were a little out of order, but in like how they got to certain things were nonsensical, but like it's, mm-hmm. it's a 10 minute parody from like a, an entire season of the show. Yeah. Is it all just season one? Or? Yeah, that's all season one. Okay, cool. I guess they spend a lot more time. There's like more giant monsters, and like there's a, how they had that one giant monster. There's a giant monster in season two, mm-hmm. but that's as far as because I, I, that's all. I've the one that ate comic book yeah, guy. Yeah. So looks like somebody hasn't seen very much of season three. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen any. I don't think he was talking to you. Yeah, I thought he was. <laughs> I thought he was addressing me directly. Yeah, he was. Daniel, worst podcast host ever. Yeah, it was like it's like when Dora talks to me. Well, yeah, but she talks to everybody. Oh, I'm not special. Um, nobody's special. That's that's <laughs> oh, the secret. Oh, okay. That that's good. That's the secret. So we're doing Incredibles one. Yeah, that's what Bluey taught me. Is that the the truth is that nobody's special. <laughs> That's an actual episode. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> the truth the truth is you're not special. You're you're super special to me and your mom, but to the rest of the world, you're not special. That's actually a super great lesson. I don't know how you deliver it to a child. Uh well, they made it they made it work. <laughs> I'm so happy. That a uh, bluey top tier. This would be the bluey podcast. Based on the jokes in this episode, I kind of got the feeling that the Simpsons writers were criticizing Stranger Things for going overboard with 80s references. I don't know. Probably. That's what it felt like. You, you know how I've said for uh, before we started watching these episodes and you've been tricking me into liking The Simpsons? Mm-hmm. How I said I didn't like The Simpsons all that much? Mm-hmm. The writing in this episode really kind of reminded me of the stuff that I don't like about some of the episodes I've seen, which is just these really kind of constant benign jokes. There's very little teeth on this episode in comparison to like some of the other ones. Does that make any sense? It does. And this is a good time to bring up why we watched this one. There's a couple reasons. So my mission was to find a quote unquote bad one. I don't know if I would go so far as to label this one bad, but I wanted to find one that would be on the bottom of my personal list and that I also thought that you may not like as much. It's also on the bottom of my yeah, personal it's, list. Yeah, it's going to be on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. um, but in addition to that, I wanted to find one from a property that I knew you weren't crazy about. So that sh- make, Stranger Things. That makes sense. And um, I, I don't give much credit to Screen Rant, but when I was having trouble, because I liked the majority of them, I, I googled worst Treehouse of Horror episodes, and Screen Rant has a top 15 list. Okay. What I don't like is they do it by the whole episode instead of just by segments. Yeah. But they use the uh, TVD, TV whatever ratings system to and just do it that way. And this one, the episode that this one's a part of was either the second or third worst one overall. Okay. It was the third one. The worst one is the one that has Homerzilla in it, or the second worst one. Oh, wow. It's, I also don't give much credit to Screen Rant most of the time, but occasionally there's a... It, it, this uh, list of the worst ones actually has a ton of the ones that we've reviewed on it. <laughs> okay, so let me scroll to the bottom. 
It's okay. I just get to pretend like I'm better than Screen Rant until I agree I'm, with them. We are, <laughs> we are better than Screen Rant. <laughs> okay, so the worst one is Treehouse of Horror 29, which has their their parody of Jurassic Park, Geriatric Park, which isn't one of their better ones, but is not hor- horrible. Yeah. And then their second worst one is Treehouse of Horror 31, which is the one that has the Toy Story and the Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse episode, which is not the one we talked about last week. Yeah, that was with the par- the paraplegic Yeah, Spider-Man. that this one is a into the Spider-Verse parody. Does he go into a universe with other paraplegic Spider-Man? Uh no, that it's not across the Spider-Verse. Okay. It's into the Spider-Verse. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh and then the third worst one is the one that we did recently with the Dexter uh the Dexter parody, the Avatar parody and the Spider-Man parody. And then the fourth worst one is the one that has Homer Zilla and the uh, Reanimator parody. Huh, okay. And then just like some other notable ones on here is the episode that has the, the blob one. This is so stupid what they said. Okay. Married to the blob predictably sees Homer in the role of the blob. Well, duh. <laughs> Are you going to complain that they made crusty Pennywise too? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. We made the big fat to the blob. Okay. So the the stranger thing ones was like was five or six on the list okay okay they're coming to get you barbara so, so characters um so you don't have to explain every single character but i have no way uh the only stranger things character i know by name is 11 yeah lisa yeah the sleep okay so can you explain who a couple of the other ones were um i don't remember any of the characters names my house is the kid that goes missing <laughs> Because one of the kids goes missing. Okay. And then all the rest of the kids, just, other than Bart, were like way too not. Bart's the main one mm-hmm. from season one, and the rest of them were too nondescript to me to. Because there's like oh, one of them, one of the kids in the show is uh, has that uh, ah oh God, I'm trying to be politically correct here. I don't know if it's a, a disease or a disorder. He doesn't have teeth. Okay. I don't know how you describe that. Yeah, like, correctly. like, uh, but that's the that's the uh, the condition he has. Mm-hmm. No, they didn't do anything with that. So, okay. uh, Millhouse's parents were the par. Well, in the show, it's only the mom. There's only a mom. Does she go crazy and put up Christmas lights and try? Yeah, to- yeah, yeah. She puts up Christmas lights. But that happens over time because like little things start happening around the house and she starts piecing it together mm-hmm. where Milhouse's dad just ra- immediately starts going nuts. Yeah, well, like it's seven minutes long. Yeah, so Th- that, that does sound interesting. It sounds season like... one's great. Mm-hmm. See, and you know, I didn't even like when it first came out, I didn't even mind it at first, but then mm-hmm. it was like I'm always hard pressed to think of more examples, but like when I see it, I'm like, oh, there it is again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, okay, cool. Was was Lisa good as Eleven? Yeah, she was fine. I don't know. I kind of just wish they would have gone a little bit harder on it. I guess. My question is, and I have no reason to think this, but my thought was always that Eleven was like the result <laughs> of some sort of experiment. Yeah, she's from the same facility that opens the portal. Oh, okay. In this, she's just like, oh, I have psych... All girls have psychic powers. Yeah, all girls have psychic So that's not actually which how is, it is in which the show. Is just, that's just true. Okay. Well, it may... In the show, it's true, or in real life? It's, and it's in real life. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. But in the show, it's not like that in the show. Yeah, I know. It's because she was a subject of an experiment. Oh, okay. Yeah, I always imagined her like a Charlie McGee... She, kind of. She's basically char- it's Charlie McGee versus uh, not versus meets uh oh God what's a good Stephen King book with a parallel world because he's written a lot of them the Gunslinger yes <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah that, we are recording our Gunslinger episode after that, this there's a it's season one is basically just a Stephen King book. It, I'll, I'll have to watch it at some point. Yeah, it's basic, It's like a Stephen King book with a little less edge to it. It's a little bit more family friendly. Mm-hmm. Like there is some like messed up stuff in it, mm-hmm. but it's not like 
I could watch it with them and it'd be no no issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well there is there there is a dead child on screen, but the body turned out to not be real. I'll kill you all! <laughs> I'll drive you crazy and I'll kill you all! I'm every nightmare you ever had. I am your worst dream come true. I'm everything you ever were afraid of. All right, cool. So we're moving on. Scary shit. Uh, best joke, worst joke. Uh, I I have a definitive best joke. What's your definitive best joke? Uh, Millhouse asking. Oh yeah, the like, like. Yeah, yeah. no, that was good. That's one of the few times I laughed. Uh, that was. I think that's the only time I laughed out loud. Yeah, I think I had a couple grunts. Yeah, I mean, there's, like, it's not, it's not literally the unfunniest thing I've ever seen, but I think it's definitively the least funny one we've watched. Yeah, <laughs> the like, like thing I kind of relate to too. Yeah, no, I, I do too. That, that, that joke was great. I didn't know if I found this one to be unfunny because it's unfunny or because I haven't watched Stranger Things. I think it's a little column A, a little column B. I think that the writing in this one was a little bit weaker. Like I said before, there are just some of these episodes that we watch where they it almost feels like the Simpsons are like, the writers are relishing in how vicious they can be mm -hmm. when they're taking pot shots of things. At the same time, they're celebrating it. Mm -hmm. Where this one kind of felt like, let's just kind of gently poke at them. Mm -hmm. it, it just didn't feel as uh, funny to me, I guess. Uh, it's it's the difference between like uh, I mean like 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 him or hate him like I'm a big fan of like Dave Chappelle, and he'll just go hard on somebody and I find that funny, mm -hmm. but then you have like a comedian who's trying to pussyfoot around every issue. That's what this kind of felt like to me. Yeah, it was like uh, we need to be use the safest possible joke for this. I think maybe part of the difference between maybe something like this and the Godzilla episode is that Godzilla is a one of the longest and most celebrated franchises of all time, but it wasn't like the topical pop culture powerhouse yeah. that like Stranger Things was at the height of its popularity. And they were, but they were still willing to make fun of like bad Japanese dubs, mm -hmm. which is something like someone might call insensitive these days, but it was still like something that they would do. And maybe it's just because there's not a lot of stuff in Stranger Things to really make. One of the kids is black in the show, but none of the kids were black. Hmm. They could have had Lewis. That that's another reason why it was like hard to pinpoint like who's anyone supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. But anyway, that like, I'm rambling now. A particular so is the Millhouse one your best joke? Yeah, that's my best joke, yeah. And that's also a really relatable joke. Yeah, I agree. I had a hard time calling girls in like high school. I still have a hard time calling girls. Mm hmm I take my shirt off and women literally gasp now and I still can't go, hey girl, what's going on? It's all about confidence. <laughs> yeah. Um picking a specific worst joke is hard. Yeah. I don't think it's not that I think that like any of the jokes were bad, it's just that they all felt super safe to me. Yeah. Like it's I think I'm just gonna go with Mo House's dad just automatically kinda going crazy. Yeah. Um not that it was bad. Like it was kind kind of funny how they were like trying to like rush to the conclusion. Mm hmm It just but I didn't laugh. Yeah. I guess I'm gonna go with and again it's not particularly bad, it's just I didn't laugh. Uh, the it, as long as we're really quiet, they oh I forgot you're not supposed to talk to. <laughs> yeah, I guess like yeah. But it, for me it was it was kind of even keel the whole way. There weren't like any jokes that I thought were particularly bad. It's just that I wasn't really laughing. Like, yeah, yeah. It was an episode. Yeah. Okay, it's the uh, Let Me In Crossroads of yeah. Treehouse of Horror episodes. <laughs> yeah, it exists. But it has better art. Okay. Uh, yes. Much better. <laughs> I did like the design, like of like the uh, the over under or whatever yeah. they called it. I mean, that's what it looks like in the show too. Was... I, I loved Marge. I don't know what character she was supposed to be, but she looks so cute. Anytime her hair's down, I think they should just make her hair down all the time. I don't like it, but I don't know if they're gonna stop making Homer strangle Bart. I guess anything's okay now. Oh, apparently they're just gonna keep doing that now. Good. <laughs> Oh my god, are you Stephen King? No, I'm Dean Koontz. Oh. Moving on to Kings and Koontz. Daniel, what is your king for danger things? Uh, that you found an episode that we can both rank at the bottom together. 
My king is that they somehow managed to not only get episode 666 to be a Treehouse of Horror episode, but they also managed for it to be the 30th Treehouse of Horror, which means that its Roman numerals are XXX. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's just... That, and that's what I was going down the wiki and I noticed that. I'm like, oh, I got to check, check this one out. Uh, my coons was that they had uh, Nelson and Martin as two of the, the kids in the group. And I don't think either of them literally said one line. I, I think that's also going to be my coons is like, uh, even as like a pair, like, again, they only have seven minutes. Mm -hmm. But even like it didn't feel rushed to me. Well, they, they had 21 minutes for it. Okay, I guess that's It true. was a full episode. Death Note didn't... Did they have 21 for... No, they had seven. Okay, uh, that didn't feel rushed to me. It, it is the only one they've ever given a full episode. Okay. Uh, uh, almost all these other ones didn't feel rushed in comparison to this one. Yeah. So that kind of goes with the, the two kids not doing anything. It did feel pacing-wise very fast. Yeah. Um, and, I, and again, I've never seen it, so I don't, I don't know, but it did feel very fast. And granted, as opposed to like doing a parody of a movie, this is a whole season of a TV show. True. And I think they're like, they're either 45 minute or hour long episodes. So that, they did get through a lot. Yeah, so, so the, that might not be fair, but at the same time, like, it doesn't make your episode feel any better when I'm grading you on a curve. Yeah, so exactly. that's fair. Okay, cool. Uh, ranking, we both said, already said it's it's below. So we both, ha I think we both had The Exorcist at the bottom and now it's Yes, we both had The Exorcist at the bottom, and now we both have Danger Things at the bottom. Homework. The 80s is great, but it's been overdone. We need a new decade to be pop culture's main character. What's it going to be? God, I was either going to go with the 90s or the early 2000s. Okay. Because I want a bunch of like really stupid weeaboos to be running around doing Naruto runs or screaming their Dragon Ball Z screams as the joke. You could have Jigglos too, or Juggalos, Juggalos, Juggalos yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we can have like a Juggalo character who thinks he's all fucking hard. Mm. Uh, you know, I live in white suburbia and I listen to clown rap and I think I'm fucking badass. That'd be funny. Yeah, and you could have like some uh, trench coat wearing edgelord who likes corn. Oh God, yeah, it'd be perfect. <laughs> oh my God, yes. <laughs> I want to I want to write this sitcom. Yeah, that'd be or great. this, I guess horror series. Yeah. What was scary in the '90s or 2000s? Why 2K? George Bush. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Obama. Terrorism. He ain't an American. He won't share his birth certificate. Uh, <laughs> He's from Kenya. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um. I'm gonna say uh, the the 1920s because there's lots of fodder. That so even further back, yeah. Yeah, you've got uh, prohibition, the start of the Great Depression, uh, women's women's suffrage, uh, the move, women's suffrage movement, and them first getting the vote. So there's just lots of like things culturally to uh, to base stories on. When did the Russian Japanese War happen? The Russo Japanese War. I think is 1912. Okay. Russo. It's one of my favorite wars. It's a very interesting war. 1904 to 1905. I was. Wow. Okay. So it's even further back than I thought. Yeah. It's uh, that was, I believe, is Japan's first uh, war on the on the world stage as an imperial power. Yeah. Russia's all like, "Hey, we need an easy victory." And Japan's like, "I <laughs> bet." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Russia has a, a problem with that. <laughs> Japan didn't even have half the world, half the Western world bankrolling them. <laughs> they were like, we have the power of God and anime on our side. All right, let's wrap this up. Um, upcoming on the Horror of Babylon, uh, next 
Sunday, we are doing the first Goosebumps movie because we read uh, Goosebumps the Beast from the East last week. We're a Goosebumps podcast now because we like the easy books. Yeah, I think uh, we're just going to turn into one week we do Simpsons, the next week we do Goosebumps and just just That sounds so great. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe once in a while we'll do a real book. (laughs) (laughs) Every once in a while. How about the first Sunday of each month we do The Dark Tower because Sunday, February 4th, (laughs) we're doing The Drawing of the Three by Stephen King. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be our real book for the year. And then our next two Thursday bonus episodes are just two movies we wanted to watch. Uh, Thursday, February 1st is The Ramen Girl, starring Brittany Murphy. And Thursday, February is Season of the Witch, starring Nicolas Cage and Ron Perlman. Thank you for watching Danger Things with me tonight. It was an amazing time. Because I was with you. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> and thank you to our patrons, <laughs> Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and... Logan the, the Full, full metal, metal Patron. And, and Ben, ben the, the Fourth, Patron, patron of, of Hope. Hope. And Mia the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain. Oh, and thank you to Four Horsemen Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia. The Mall at Robinson in Pittsburgh, <clears> Pennsylvania. <throat> you can shop online at shop.fourhorsemancomics.com. And actually, you can visit Ronald the Third. Grandpa's Christmas. I just got a text from him. He made it back from the over under. Is it actually, is it called the over under? Is that, or is that a dumb name? No, it's the upside down. The upside down? Yeah, they call it because everything's like flipped. Mm. Because it's just in the show, they describe it uh, like Eleven describes it as a piece of paper. We're here and everything else is upside down. Okay. I believe that. Do the kids come up with that name? I, I believe so. Okay. So it's like a bunch of, like, 10-year-olds. That's fine. Yeah. It sounds kind of silly, but if kids came up with it, that's fine. Yeah, it's like when a Stephen King character, like, one of his kids comes up with something. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Well, thank you to our patrons. Stay tuned for our socials and stay scary. Scary. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Stay scary. Mm-hmm.